That's what I was saying. They said we have to stay here and see because they said we in the us to be able to assemble back into the house of prayer. Amen. One more time. And truly we are thankful and grateful to each of you for your presence. This is another day that the Lord has made. Amen. How many excited about being back into the house of prayer one more time? Amen. For he said, where there are two or three that I am in the midst. Amen. So truly we are grateful and thankful that God has allowed us to experience his grace and mercy and assemble uh, back into the house of prayer that we can come together collectively, amen, and give God all praise, give God all honor, give God all glory, for he is worthy of all the praise, all the honor, and all of the glory as we come together in this first Sunday of November 2024, amen, and truly we are grateful for the opportunity to come and to magnify and to glorify the name of the Lord. How many know God is worthy of the praise? He is worthy of the praise and worthy of the honor and glory. And the Hebrew writer said that, that we ought to come with a sacrificial praise of thanksgiving with the fruit of our lips, magnifying and glorifying the name of the Lord. Amen. I'm not talking about just giving him a panic but how many know that it has not been for the Lord on our side? Where would we be? Amen. I don't know about you, but I got a reason to praise him. I got a reason to glorify him. I got a reason. Amen. And we got a reason. Hallelujah. So we ought to lift him up. Amen. As we prepare to enter into his presence. At this time, amen, our Christ will come. Amen. And open us up. Amen. With the praise of that you. Amen. Come on, give them some love as they come and bless us.
on, let's give God some praise. Amen. Just a couple of announcements, amen, and then after which uh, Dr. Prince will lead us to the throne of grace and the choir shall return. Um, we want to announce uh, that on November the 23rd at 1230 p.m. that we will be having our virtual uh, fall gathering, which is our midwinter council, and it will be virtual, so uh, look, for, look for information that will be coming out uh, concerning that and how to register, how to register uh, for that meeting. Amen. Uh, for uh, we will have our midwinter council online this year uh, for Southern California. Amen. Also, we want to uh, announce. Amen. That we have with us uh, our director of a new director uh, concerning uh, the Lewis Metropolitan Church. Uh, we are coming, knowing that uh, Sister Danette Olmstead served for many years as a very faithful and servant leader, as leading our choir and the praise ministry, the music ministry and helping to assist leading our church. And truly, we thank God for the life and legacy that she leaves with us. Amen. And she continues to live. Amen. And, uh, uh, you know, I, I heard her voice, Mother Evans, uh, tell me uh, just the other day that, Pastor, you need to tell the choir that they need to move on now. They, they, can, they need to move on and get back into doing what they have been trained and taught to do. Amen. And so truly we thank God for her, her teaching and her ministry. And on today that I want to introduce uh, our uh, new director that is coming uh, to us. Uh, she's a native of, of Chicago, Illinois, Sister, Sister Booker. Uh, she's come with, uh, as one with over 35 years of uh, music ministry, uh, one that is very gifted uh, when it comes to reading music as well as ministry and leading and singing concerning uh, the ministry of music and the ministry of singing. Uh, and not only she come uh, to us as a music director, most of all, she's coming to us as a woman of God. Amen. Amen. She loves the Lord. Amen. And she wants to be a vessel, an instrument uh, that uh, can help us to magnify, to glorify, and be a great instrument for the upbuilding of God's kingdom uh, through the ministry of singing and the ministry of music. Uh, but not only she's coming to us as a director and gifted uh, with many years of experience in in the music ministry, but also uh, she's coming to us, amen, not by herself, amen, but she's coming with her husband, Brother James, amen. Brother James Collins, amen, a very faithful student, brother, amen. You know, the Bible says, try the spirit by the spirit, and I can tell that he's a man of God that truly loves the Lord, and I, I know this, and, on Facebook, you know, Facebook exposure, amen, and that uh, he is very student of the Word of God as well as a, uh, not just as a learner, but also as a teacher, amen. So, Lewis, would you put your hands together and give us love for Sister Diana Collins, amen, and our new uh, uh, director of music here at Lewis uh, Metropolitan, amen, and we greet you and welcome you, amen, with open and we just excited, amen, to see how God is going to use you and your husband, amen, going to use the choir, amen, to, to help us to build God's kingdom here at uh, Lewis Metropolitan, amen, amen. So let us give her some love one more time. Amen. Also, let us thank Brother Scott. Brother Scott, amen, was standing and working with Sister Danette all the way to the end and then stepped in and volunteered to step in and help to assist uh, 
uh, because he said, Pass, I just love my church and whatever I can do to help. So we thank God for Brother Scott. For your love that you have for God and for the church of God. Amen. Amen. At this time, Mother Evans, we have Mother Evans with us. Mother Evans, amen, is the mother, amen, of Sister Nanny Longstead. And she wants to have a few words, amen, today. Thank you, Pastor. And I won't take up much of your time, but I thought it was. off Sister Billy. <laughs> we will never forget the love and the care that the Lewis family showed to us during this time. I ask that you continue to pray for me and Father Darrell and the grandchildren that we will accept God's will and move on and do what we can do for the betterment of his kingdom. Thank you. nothing too hard for God, and God is a God of what Paul said, all comforting, and we know that God can comfort us no matter what we're going through, so we trust uh, the bereaved families into the care of the Lord, amen, amen, amen. At this time, uh, we ask that brother, I mean, Dr. Uh, Prince would come and lead us to the throne of grace. Come on, let's give us a love as she comes. Praise the Lord, church. We'll bow our heads. Oh, heavenly gracious Father, we just want to thank you for this new day. As we enter your gates with thanksgiving and to your courts with praise, we just want to thank you, Lord, for your presence right now in your sanctuary. We just want to thank you, Father God, for all you've done for us this past week, Father God. Be it right there by our sides. We thank you, Father God, for sitting high and looking low down upon us, Father God. Seeing all our faults, but yet, Father God, supplying all our needs. We thank you, Lord, for just encouraging us in, in your words itself. We thank you, Lord, when we strayed away from your words, Father God, you just pulled us back on the end. We thank you, Father God, when we were down, you lifted us up this past week. We thank you, Lord, when we were going through depression, Father God, this week, you encouraged us in your words and let you know that you're still there with us. And we just thank you, Father God. Thank you for just giving, standing by our bedside last night, Father God, and not allowing that death angel to come and step by us. But instead, you had him to move on and gave us this new day and this new life. And Father God, we come in this day trying to do whatever it is, Father God, that you have asked us to do, to just live right in your word, Father God. And share your words with others that they too may be coming along to you. Oh, Father God, we just thank you for the marriages, the relationship, the children, the schools, Father God. All over the world, the global problems that we have, in, Father God, we ask that you continue to place your hands in them, Father God. Still let man know, Father God, that this still is your world, a world that you create, a world that you own, Father God, and a world that you will see that is run the way you have it to be. And we thank you for that, Heavenly Father. Father God, right now, we just want to thank you for the churches all over the world right now, teaching in the name of Jesus, Father God. 
Let them know, Father God, you say that you never forsake us and leave us not, that you ever leave us alone. We thank you, Father God, for just that. We just thank you, Lord, for being the almighty God that you are, Father God. Going into these hospitals all over the world, Father God, still let them know that it's not the surgeon, it's this about you. You are the one that's the surgeon above all surgeons and the doctors above all doctors. You're the one that gives the last word when we live, whether we die, whether we get well, whether we go home from these hospitals back in the selections and after which we return with the preach word. Amen. Let's give them some love as they come.
right now. Amen, amen, amen. Amen. Did you know that it wasn't the alarm clock, but it was the Lord? Amen. Amen. That woke you up. Amen. This morning. Amen. Thank you, choir. Amen. For blessing us. Amen. With those selections. Amen. Thank you, sister. Sister colleagues. Amen. Lord, we acknowledge that it is you that is blessing us right now. It is you that woke us up this morning and closed us in our right mind to assemble into the house of prayer to be a part of this time of worship. We are grateful and we are thankful. We ask now, God, that you will speak to our hearts and speak to our minds and our souls as you allowed us to enter into your presence. And God, we believe that preaching and singing and praising goes together. But we realize that there is no preaching without the leadership and guidance of your Holy Spirit. So we ask now in the name of Jesus that you will speak Holy Spirit, that you will speak now by the Lamb of God. But this is your service prayer that we ask in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Truly, we are thankful and we are grateful. Amen. To each of you today for your presence. Amen. For this is the day that the Lord has woke us up. Amen. And we ought to be glad about it. And this first Sunday of November to be a part of this communion worship. Amen. Let's give God praise for our Metro Lights ministry. For our Metro Lights, amen, the ladies that you see with the black and, and the yellow, amen, for the Metro Light ministry is a ministry uh, for nominal women of God here at Lewis, amen, that uh, is truly a blessing to the kingdom of God, for they have servant leaders have really uh, expanded God's kingdom through Lewis Metropolitan by not only visiting our sick and being a blessing to the less fortunate, but also in making sacrifices uh, to uplift and to beautify God's kingdom through this local ministry. So we want to say to our Metrolite ministry, Thank you for your service. Thank you for your labor. Amen. Thank you for your dedication and your commitment. Truly, our prayers are with you all because we know that uh, the numbers have decreased. Amen. But we know that God is too wise to make a mistake. And we continue to trust each of you into the care of the Lord. Amen. Can we celebrate them once again by giving thanks and praise? Amen. My understanding that there was uh, a major uh, accident on Interstate 110 that helped some of our members up. So we're thankful and grateful that you all was able to make it. You to have your Bible. There's a passage of scripture, really one passage of scripture I would like to lift up in that Galatians chapter six. We know that Super Tuesday is coming, and we are in this election season, and we want to encourage all that have not voted uh, to make sure that you do vote. And those that have voted, we honor you and salute you for taking what we believe our Christian responsibility, and that is to exalt the righteousness of God by letting our voices be heard through voting. In Galatians chapter 6, verse number 10, in Galatians chapter 6, verse number 10, Brother Roger, when you get a chance, can I get some volume in the monitors and I think turn down the house speakers. Uh, Galatians chapter 6, verse number 10, when you find it, you should find these familiar words. Therefore, whenever we have the opportunity, 
that we should do good to everyone, especially to those in the household of faith. That is the word of God for the people of God. He says, therefore, whenever we have the opportunity, we should do good to everyone, especially to those in the family of faith. My brothers and sisters, I want to talk from the subject, seize your opportunity. Seize your opportunity. God knows how to open doors of opportunities for us so that we may be able to do his work. And though there are many that opposes his work, but as born again believers, as Christians, we must seize the opportunity and take advantage of the time to do good unto all men. And do you know, my brothers and sisters, when it comes to time, time is considered to be a part of life. But opportunity is also a part of life as well. And I think I need to tell someone on this morning that there are two uh, types of opportunities. There is the opportunity that we call seize opportunity. And then there is what we call the miss opportunity. November the 5th of 2024 is considered to be Super Tuesday, which is an opportunity for you and I to make a difference and play a major role in building God's kingdom. For the Bible says in Colossians chapter number four, verse number five, that to be wise in the way that you act toward outsiders. Make the most of every opportunity. Saints of God, Super Tuesday is an opportunity for the body of Christ and not only to talk about Jesus, but also to be about Jesus. And that is by witnessing and putting forth action by voting for God's righteousness as a servant leader concerning Jesus Christ. And so as the 24, 2024 presidential race has intensified, the new research revealed from the Cultural Research Center at Arizona Christian University that is led by Dr. George Bonner indicates that millions of Christians are unlikely to vote in this Super Tuesday, November the 5th of 2024. Bonner says this election season is marked by significant drops in voter interest. It is marked by significant decrease in excitement and enthusiasm, particularly amongst the Christian voters who have historically been a key player in determining the outcome of presidential elections. According to the research, only 51% of people of faith are likely to vote November the 5th of 2024 election. I find it very interesting how the results of this November 24 election reveals that large number of Christian churches have now distanced themselves from this election. 
refusing to even encourage as pastors and spiritual leaders their congregants to vote and avoid teaching related to many of the key social issues on which this election is focusing on. And here in this pericope of Galatians chapter 6, the Apostle Paul is teaching the Galatian church, my brothers and sisters, that it is our responsibility to communicate with one another. Galatians chapter 6, verse number 6, Paul says that the learner should communicate with their teacher in all good things. Because the teacher has sown spiritual principles that help the learner or student to be steadfast and unmovable. Therefore, the Apostle Paul is teaching as a learner, they are to sow material things unto the teacher because Paul teaches in Galatians 6 and 7 that whatever we sow, we will reap. Then Paul goes on in that verse number 9 of Galatians chapter 6 and says, Not to be weary in your well-doing. God, godly doing because in due speed. That, that, that is God timing that you shall reap ill you may not. Now, my brother, as we look here in Galatians chapter 6 and verse number 10, the Apostle Paul moves from the learner of the student from communicating with the teacher. Watch the text. To take every opportunity to communicate to all men and women. Notice in this Galatians 6 and 10, and Paul says, as we have therefore opportunity, let us do good unto all men, especially unto them who are of a household of faith. Lewis Metropolitan and my brothers and sisters, there are two major points I would like to lift up uh, as the body of Christ and as the Christian family that we must understand that if we're going to seize the opportunity when the opportunity uh, presents itself concerning Super Tuesday, November the 5th of 2024 concerning this election day. First of all, it's important that we understand that we must, as Christians, take on our Christian responsibility. That, that we must understand, as Christians, that we must take on our Christian responsibility. Do you know what that means, saints of God? That means that as Christians, that we must be, that we can be the deciding factor in a bunch of federal, state elections. But here it is, even though that we can be a deciding factor as the Christian family in the presidential election, in federal elections, in, in state elections, and local elections, here it is, many Christians are choosing not to make a difference. But Paul, Paul is teaching in this Galatians 6 and 10, as we have therefore opportunity. I, I like the King, I like the God's Word translation in this Galatians 6 and 10, where the God's Word translation said, whenever we have the opportunity, we have to do what is good for everyone, especially for the family of believers. Brothers and sisters, in the closing chapter of Galatians, Paul gives some short exhortation about various areas of Christian conduct and how as a believer we should behave 
In this Galatians chapter 6, Paul is teaching that there are, as believers, that we are to have a, a, a different behavior concerning our conduct that is opposite of those that are living by the law according to the flesh. One of the ways as a Christian that we should behave, the Apostle Paul uh, said that when opportunity is given, that we are to do good to others. Well, one of the ways that we can do good to others, my brothers and sisters, uh, Solomon says, is by exalting the righteousness of God, here it is, through voting. Yeah, Paul says, as we therefore have opportunity, let us do good to all men, especially to those that are of the household of faith. Saints of God, God requires his own to do good to others. Many in this wicked world are more interested in doing evil to others. Criminals, and yes, some politicians seem to be both having the same aim in life, and that is to make decisions for themselves and not concerning unto others. The Apostle Paul says, as we have therefore the opportunity, everyone does not have the same opportunity. But most of us, saints of God, have more opportunities that we have to commit. But when opportunity presents itself, Paul says that we don't need to stand on the sideline, but we need to put forth action. And here it is, November the 5th. 2024, this coming Tuesday, is an opportunity for the saints of God to take action by exalting God's righteousness by voting. Paul, Paul says, let, let us do good unto all. No, no one is exempt from our benevolence. Voting as a Christian it allows the believers of Christ to show their benevolence or the, their goodwill for those that are less fortunate or less advantaged. Everyone is not able to vote in, in this November 5th of 2024. And Paul says those that are able to vote, those that are able to let their voices be heard, he said that you ought to do good to all men by taking advantage of the opportunity and make sure your voice is heard because everybody is not able to vote. You know that we're living in a society where a laws have been put in place that if you got certain things on your record that you don't have the right for what our poor fathers and mothers sacrificed for and that is so we can cast our vote. There's been laws put in place that everybody voices can't be heard. But here it is, Paul said, but you that have the opportunity, you that's able to make sure your voices are heard that you need to vote for righteousness because Paul says, he says, seize the opportunity for all. Brothers and sisters, the Bible teaches in Proverbs 29, verse number two, that when the righteous are in authority, the people rejoice. But when wicked are in rulership, the people will grieve. My brothers and sisters, the, the, the Solomon says in that Proverbs 29, verse 2, that when there are righteous leaders in authority, that our nation will rejoice. But where there are wicked men and women, he says, our world will be grieving. Our nation will be in divided. Our nation will be in a corrupt. He said, because wicked leaders will have influence over 
the nation and those that are operating up under them. So without the pastor and the Christian leaders willing to speak about the Bible perspective of policies and issues and without them encouraging Christians to vote, it is hard to see how we can have the kind of godly government that we would enable people to rejoice. And so therefore, Solomon teaches us in that Proverbs 14 and 34 and Proverbs 29 and verse 2 that it's our responsibility as a Christian that we seize the opportunity and not sit on the sideline and not come up with the philosophy that the laws in place is not to benefit my kind. Well, the way that the laws benefit your kind is selecting and, and voting for leaders to be in leadership that's going to operate with the righteousness of God. But as long as we don't vote, wicked leaders. And so Paul is suggesting that we must understand that our Christian responsibility is to seize the opportunity to vote. But not only we must understand our Christian responsibility, but then lastly, Paul is saying, my brothers and sisters, we must seize the opportunity. In Ephesians chapter 5, verse 15 and 16, the apostle Paul said to the church at Ephesus, be very careful then how you live, not as unwise, but as wise. Watch the text. Making the most of every opportunity. That's what Paul says to the Galatian church, Galatians 6 to 10. Therefore, as we have opportunity, let us do good to all people. Saints of God, it, it, it is that, that time when America and Christians are giving the opportunity and responsibility to vote for those who hold the public offices. And that's why Solomon reminds us in that Proverbs 14, 34, godliness is what makes a nation great. But sin is a disgrace to any people. Let me say that again. In the New Living Translation, second edition, Solomon said, godliness is what makes America great. It's what makes a nation great. Let, let me back it up and say it again. He said, godliness is what makes a nation great. Uh, some of y'all still ain't got it. Let me back it up and say it one more again. He said, godliness is what makes a nation great again. He didn't say a certain point. Preach how the walls are listening. But he said, Godliness is what makes a nation great. But sin is a disgrace to any people. Solomon teaches that every born again faith walking believer must seize the opportunity to exalt the righteousness amongst the nation. And one of the ways that we can do that is by taking our God's given opportunity and responsibility to vote for the righteousness of God. Ah, the late President George Washington once said, it's impossible to rightly govern the world without God and the Bible. Romans 13 and 1 says, everyone who submit himself to the governing authority, for there is no authority except that which God has established. Saints of God as believers in the body of Christ, God is saying that we must seize the moment. Because part of our work as a Christian is by seizing the opportunity uh, and taking on our responsibility, voting for the political leaders that is standing up for the righteousness of God. Saints of God, 
you know that when the Christian voters seize opportunity, take on our responsibility doing an election, historically, the Christian voters has been known as the game changer. Let, let me say that again. Historically, when the Christian voter sees the opportunity during an election, the Christian voters historically has been known as the game changer. While 66% of voting age adults identify themselves as, as Christians, only half 51% of all believers of faith are expected to vote in this election. He'll, he'll be good. 66% of all adult voters have labeled themselves to be born again followers of Jesus Christ. But yet, only 51% of all people of belief, that includes Muslims, Christians, Judah, he, he said all believers of faith, 51% are expected to vote in Super Tuesday. That translates to 104 million people who are likely to sit out of this 2024 election. 41 million of whom are born again Christian. And watch this, 32 million are considered to be regular church goers like you and I. My brothers and sisters, in 2020, the gap between Mr. Trump and Mr. Biden at that time was just seven million votes. The real story lies in the margin of the victory is gonna be what they consider the swinging states which is an average of 60,000 voters. My brothers and sisters, the outcome of the 2024 presidential election is suggested based upon data that uh, is gonna come to the margin of a handful of swinging states. Swinging states are states that they consider can go either way. And that those states are Arizona, Michigan, Nevada, Pennsylvania, Wisconsin, and Georgia. My brothers and sisters, in 2016, 100 million people who were eligible to vote didn't vote. In 2020, about 80 million eligible voters didn't vote. And so it's important to understand that Paul is suggesting to us that when it comes to the Super Tuesday, that we have to seize the opportunity, especially as the body of Christ, and make sure that we let our voices be heard by casting our vote. Paul is suggesting that this ain't the time to sit on the sideline. This is not the time for you to just sit and fold your arms why everybody else is taken after. Paul is saying that every born again believer needs to be on the playing field because my brothers and sisters can, can I tell you what I believe might encourage these non-Christian Christians to vote and believe it or not I know some say it don't make no sense to preach a preacher on voting. Well, first of all, it's Bible. The Bible teaches us as Christians we're supposed to exalt the righteousness of God amongst the nation. And one of the ways that we do it is through voting. And my brothers and sisters, that's why Paul said, seize the opportunity. I believe the problem is, is that the Christian church has done God some injustice for the simple fact that we have not preached like the priest about our voting as a Christian and our responsibility as a Christian behind the sacred desk. But how many know that it's time for the, for the pulpit uh, to start speaking up and preaching uh, the righteous? You can't preach the righteousness of God about the issues that are going on in our society. So, if I could tell you what 
I believe I encourage these non-voting Christians, 49% of them that is suggested not to vote in this Super Tuesday, despite of their resistance, if we seize the opportunity and give them some encouragement to vote and show them what the Bible says concerning their responsibility as a Christian to vote from spiritual leaders that will exalt the righteousness of God, it can move them to vote. In other words, help them to understand or believe that their vote could be the swing vote. That their vote could be the vote that caused the results of the outcome of election concerning the righteous leaders and the wicked leaders. Yep. Preach by the walls and listen. It's interesting, my brothers and sisters, when we look at the data, the data showed that if non voting Christians are taught that voting is a biblical responsibility, one out of six are suggested to likely consider voting. Once again, Solomon said, Proverbs 14, 34, righteousness lift up a nation, but sin is a disgrace in any society. Saints of God, I'm going to my seat, but I'm reminded of a passage of scripture in Exodus 18, this is Carter, where the Lord had called forth this great leader, Brother Williams, by the name of Moses. And he was called to deliver God's people from the hand of Pharaoh and lead them out of bondage. And after God used him to deliver them out of bondage and out of Egypt, the Bible says that while Moses was judging the disputes of the people, Jephro was considered to be Moses' father, gave Moses some very good advice that I believe our nation would do well to heed. And then Exodus chapter 18, verse number 21, he, he said to Moses, select capable men from all the people. Men of fear for God. Men that are trustworthy, who hate dishonest gain. Who hates dishonest gain. Who hates dishonest gain. And appoint them as official over thousands, hundreds, fifty, and ten. Saints of God, I'm done. But as this critical time of our nation is at hand, we need men and women who will rule this nation with the fear of God. We need respected politicians or political leaders and not just politicians who are men and women of prayer and who passively will seek God's wisdom through the written word of God. And that's why the Apostle Paul is making his argument on today that whatever you do as a saint of God, seize the opportunity and let your voice be heard and cast your vote and make sure that we are exalting the righteousness of God amongst this land. It's good, I rest my case. It's good. Saints of God, Paul is challenging us during this critical time that we're not just to be spiritual, but Paul says that we ought to minister as the whole man and whole woman that we cannot just be spiritual concerning our relationship with God 
and not be involved socially concerning our responsibility to the nation concerning it. It has been said and the argument is politics don't belong in the church. Saints of God, I don't argue with that. I don't debate that. I kind of believe politics don't belong in the church. But according to the scripture, the church belong in politics. Historically, the Christian family has been the game changer mm -hmm. of many of our elections. Mm -hmm. And I believe that as Christians that we have to take on the responsibility and realize that this nation is not just a political of a, of a politician issue. This nation, according to the word, is the Christian issue. And he says, our responsibility that we lift up the righteousness of God for everybody. And if we're going to be able to lift up the nation of God, that means that we must be in the righteousness of God. And if that's one today have not received God's righteousness, that one today that you have not opened up your heart and accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, we invite you to come and surrender your all to him. Allow him to be the head of your life. Allow him to be the center of your attraction. For the Bible teaches us, my brothers and sisters, receiving his righteousness as simple as A, B, and C. A, all we have to do is admit that I have sinned and come short of his glory. B, that we got to believe that Jesus Christ is the only Son of God. He was crucified for my sins and for your sins and for the sins of the world. He said, then see, we got to confess him as our Lord and Savior. If there's one today that you have not received his righteousness, we invite you to come. Come to him. So that you may be able to seize this opportunity. The most important opportunity that you will ever experience in your entire life by accepting Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. And there'll be more. Or perhaps you're standing in a special prayer. We believe the prayer of the righteous pervaded much. There is no problem too small or too great that God will not answer. So if there are people who want to come to him, hallelujah, hallelujah. You may be seated in the presence of Almighty God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let us seize the moment. And you that have seized the moment, that is you that have voted, I encourage you to seize the moment by encouraging others have a moment to, to show up on Super, Super Tuesday and make sure that their voices are heard. Amen. At this time, we are to worship in the Lord in the spirit of giving as we prepare our hearts and our minds to worship him in the spirit of giving on today as our leaders come. Amen. I'm going to ask Brother Smith if you will come. Amen. As we prepare our hearts to worship in the spirit of giving on today. Amen. For the Bible teaches us that we are, one of the ways that we seize the moment is by worshiping God with our tithes and with our offerings. It is one of the ways that we tell God, I thank you, I appreciate you for all that you have manifested in, in my life. And how many of you can be God's giving? At this time, we invite you to stand outside the house that you will face the Lord, that you will come and worship Him and give it a bit of honor that you may stand and exit to your right.
just want to praise you.
this time if everyone have received one. Uh, the invitation to our Holy Communion celebration. Ye that truly honestly and repent of your sins and are in love and charity with your neighbors and are intent to lead a new life and follow the commandments of God and walk from henceforth in his holy ways. We invite you to draw near with faith and take the holy sacrament to your comfort by making the awful confession to Almighty God. The general confession, Almighty God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, maker of all things, judge of all people, we acknowledge and bewail our manifold sins and wickedness, which we from time to time most grievously have committed by the faults, words, or deed against our divine majesty providing most justly the wrath and indignation against us. We do earnestly repent and heartily sorry for these our misdoing. The remembrance of them is grieving us unto us. Have mercy upon us. Have mercy upon us. Most merciful Father, for thy Son, our Lord Jesus Christ's sake, forgive us all that is past, Grant that we may hereafter serve and please thee in newness of life, to the honor and glory of thy, thy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of thy great mercy has promised forgiveness of sin to all them with that which hearty repentance and true faith turn to thee, have mercy upon us, pardon and deliver us from all sins, confirm and strengthen us in all goodness, and bring to everlasting life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, unto whom all hearts be open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love thee and worthily magnify thy holy name. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. It is very meek, right, and our bounded duty that we should at all times and in all places give thanks unto thee, O Lord, Holy Father, Almighty, Everlasting God. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of the heavens, we loud and magnify thy glorious name, evermore praising thee and saying, Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of thy glory. Glory be to thee, O Lord, most high. Amen. We do not presume to come to this thy table, O merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in thy manifold and great mercy. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under thy table, but thou art the same Lord, whose property is always to have mercy. Grant us, therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of thy dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that our sinful souls and bodies may be made clean by his death and washed through his most precious blood and that we may evermore dwell in him and he in us. Amen. Amen. The prayer of consecration. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of thy tender mercy it is given to thy only Son, Jesus Christ, to suffer death upon the cross for our redemption, who made there a full of perfect and sufficient sacrifice, oblations and satisfactions of the sins of the whole world, and did institute, and in his holy gospel commanded us to continue perpetual memory of that his precious death until his coming again. Hear us, O merciful Father, we most humbly beseech thee, and grant that we, receiving these thy creatures of bread and wine, according to thy Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ's holy institution, and remembers of his death and passion, 
may be partakers of his most blessed body and blood. When that same night that he was betrayed, he took bread, and when he has given thanks, he break it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, for this is my body which is given for you. Do this and remember it of me. Likewise, after supper, he took the cup, and when he has given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of this, for this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for you and for many, for the remissions of sins. Do this as oft as ye shall drink it in remembrance of me. Amen. Amen. Let us now say the Lord's Prayer together. Our, Our Father, who art in heaven, how will be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, as we forgive those who trespass against us. But lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thy is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. At this time, we invite you to take the bread. For the bread is a symbolic of the great suffering, the pain, and agony that Jesus Christ, our Lord, endured for my sins, for your sins, and for the sins of the entire world. Let us now break and eat together in remembrance of how his body was broken for thee. Let us now take the cup. For in this cup is a symbolic of how Jesus' very own blood was shed for thee. Let us now drink ye all of it together in remembrance of how his blood was shed. Said so after eating the bread and drinking the cup, that we now have shown the sign that we believe that Christ shall return. Looking for that church without a spot or wrinkle. And it said, after the eating the bread and drinking the cup, they began to fellowship with one another. Let us lift up our voices as we sing a verse or two. I know that it was the blood. I know it was the blood.
uh, want to be quad members, amen, we invite you and encourage you uh, to be a part of the choir, amen. All right, Sister Red of Faith, amen. All right, hey, God bless you, amen. Amen, amen, amen. Once again, we thank God for each of you. We thank God for, amen, Mother Gary and her family, amen, that come to support her in this great celebration of the Metro Lights. Amen. Mother McGarry, I think, may be the most seasoned member of the, uh, and she's the leader, amen, of the Metro Lights. She's been a Metro Lights for many years, amen. She's still wearing her high heels, amen. Amen. So God bless you. God bless you. You and your family, thank God for your presence and your truly was a blessing to have each of you in worship. Once again, to all of our Metro Lights, and let's give it up for this point. Amen. Sister Diana. Thank God for her and for Amen. Her husband. Amen. And also let's give it up for our Metro Lights. Amen. For uh, for that great sacrifice. And lastly, our students ministry. The women that serve the Lord the table. Amen. Thank you, Dr. Prince. Amen. God bless you. Thank you for your service. Amen. Then always grateful for my wife. Amen. And the staff. Amen. Missionaries, we know that we have entered into the Thanksgiving season and we're on our way into the Thanksgiving season. So our missionaries on next Sunday will start preparing for uh, Thanksgiving baskets that they put together every year to be supportive of some less fortunate family and individuals. And so we want to be supportive uh, to some needed family by, by supporting our missionary ministry that will have a flyer showing all of the different items that you can bring. That will be a food box in the foyer that you can bring it and just drop it in and they will get those supplies as they are preparing for November the 23rd uh, to be a blessing to uh, some needed families, amen. And I can't remember how many baskets uh, Ten you baskets. last year. Ten baskets. Ten baskets. And the, and the sign up is already out there. All right. And the flyers are already out there. Amen. So we encourage you to grab one on the way out. Amen. Amen. That's nothing else. Father God, we thank you now for this time of celebration of the great sacrifice that you made through your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, that have given us this eternal relationship with you as our heavenly Father. And then, God, we come thanking you for this opportunity that you've given to us to seize this opportunity. Not only every day of our lives, but this Super Tuesday, that we will seize the opportunity and do good to all men by, a, by exalting the righteousness of you as our God, by making sure our voices are heard, by casting our votes. God, we ask now that you continue to look down upon our nation. Be with us during this election. We ask for your arms of protection. That there will be no hurt, harm, or danger. For God, the outcome will be for your own glory. Bless us now as we depart from this place, but never from your presence. May your grace, sweet communion, your Holy Spirit, be with us now and forevermore. Until we meet again, let us lift up our voices together and let us sing.